Atul Lili, equity strategist at Chris Weiss, and he joins us uh, from Sydney. Atul, good to have you back on the program. Uh, what about Commonwealth Bank's results? Up 22% in the first half. Is that pretty much what we're going to see for the rest of the lending pack? Oh, look, we are positive on the Australian banking sector at present, uh, really for a few reasons. It goes beyond the short-term earnings story that you're seeing at present. Uh, banks globally are more exposed to the policy action that we're seeing. Secondly, we're seeing that if you do see a risk appetite recovery, what leads risk appetite down typically leads to recovery. That is the Australian banking sector. Uh, thirdly, they're undervalued, uh, trading at around 7.5% uh, dividend yields right now, plus your franking for Australian investors. Uh, and even if we don't see an immediate resolution to the bank funding issues we're seeing globally, Australian banks really aren't exposed to those wholesale funding markets for the near term. The loan growth is quite low and sufficiently covered by the deposits, so the refinancing requirements are low. So mm -hmm. there aren't more than just the short-term earnings reasons to be looking at Australian banks. Well, in volatile times, people and investors love dividend yields. Okay, that's also best pick amongst the banking shares. Uh, look, look from, from a, uh, persp the perspective we have at Credit Suisse, we're looking at it on a valuation ground, so we have a preference for ANZ and NAB over Westpac and CBA, not only because of the valuation support you're seeing there, uh, but also with regards to where their particular business mix is as well. Okay, Atoll, let me talk to you about one of the greatest comebacks, and we're calling it on the markets. Yesterday we saw, you know, the ASX 200 index down 5.5% at one point in the session. It was looking ugly, but, you know, close to the end, I mean, how did it rally back to gain 1%? Yeah, look, that's a, that's a good question. From, from the starting point that we had at the, at the start of the day, or even over the past couple of days, it's important to know that Australian equities were cheaper than they were in the financial crisis. If we look at the relationship between real corporate bond yields and through the cycle earnings, Australian banks were approximately 30, uh, Australian market rather was approximately 35 per cent cheap, basically imputing credit market conditions similar to what we saw in a financial crisis. Yet clearly we were nowhere near that when you're looking at bank funding spreads around the world, when you're looking at credit spreads around the world. So the market was undervalued and really just awaiting policy action, which is what we were starting to see. Indeed, over the last three days, we've seen the ECB, the G7, uh, and as recently as last night, the FOMC act uh, to really mm -hmm. provide stability to the market environment. And, and that sets the scene uh, for the closing of that undervaluation gap. Well, you know, I spoke to Wayne Swan, the Australian Treasurer, this morning at all. I asked him about the FOMC statement and, you know, basically interest rates being kept exceptionally low until mid-2013. What does that mean for the Australian market and the Australian economy? Yeah, look, I think I mean, what it means for markets globally uh, in general is that the FOMC is really trying to push investors from instead of sitting in cash and instead of sitting in safe havens globally, into, into risk assets, uh, whether that be bonds, which were also undervalued, or into equities. The implications can actually be uh, not as positive for the Australian market to the extent that investors do move out of some of those safe havens, uh, including the Australian dollar, which some investors were treating as safe havens, including commodities, which a, a number of investors were, were hoarding their cash in. Uh, yeah. As we start to see that movement out of those safe haven assets uh, into some of the riskier assets, uh, it will be a positive for some segments of the Australian economy, uh, but certainly mm -hmm. not as positive it is, as it is for, for some of the globally uh, exposed companies. So i got one more question for you. Considering we're seeing, uh, while well, we did see panic on the markets, looks like some confidence back. Um, do you still expect the ASX to end the year higher? Uh, we do. Our, our official target is 5,000 for the ASX 200. Uh, we, we do expect it to end higher for the year. It's coming off a deeply uh, undervalued point. Uh, we have been bearish for the majority of the year, but ultimately valuations provide a floor and policy actions provide a catalyst, and that's what we're seeing. Okay, Atoll, thanks for joining us this morning. Atoll Levy, equity strategist at Credit Suisse.